Good afternoon. My name's David Balkham. I'm a molecular biologist, and it's a real honor to address the Academy in this context this afternoon. I set out when I started my career more than 40 years ago, reinforced by what I suppose you might call youthful reductionism, to understand how genes are regulated in plants and animals. I thought that knowing how genes are regulated would inform many other important questions in biology. And I still think that, I guess you would call it less youthful reductionism these days. Most of my work has been on plants, but allowing for there being a single tree of life, evolution at the heart of it, I thought that what was true for peas would also be true for people or maize and men. I was influenced by the work of Jacques Monod, who justified his work on bacteria by saying that what is true for E. coli was also true for elephants. I thought my alliteration was actually better than his, but the concept is still the same. I started out using various plants in my experimental work, things like wheat and Jerusalem artichokes for very various reasons, but I found that they were too complicated and I started working with viruses. Eventually, this led me and my group to discover a new class of regulatory RNAs, small RNAs, they're now known as small interfering RNAs, and they're part of a family of regulatory RNA molecules affecting gene expression and um, disease resistance. We made this discovery in the 1990s, but I have to confess we missed a trick. We should have done it 10 years sooner, but that's looking back. In the last 10 years or so, We've moved, we still work on um, RNA and disease resistance, but now we've moved into the field of epigenetics and Mendelian inheritance, non-Mendelian inheritance. Now, for much of my work, much of my career, I've been supported by a charitable foundation. And I've always been impressed by the words of the benefactor of the foundation, who said that he wanted the people that his money was supporting to do important basic science. But... If there was the opportunity to do something useful with our discoveries that we should then it was our responsibility to take uh, to to do that to try and do that and I, i've tried to take on that responsibility throughout my career now i probably could have done better uh, but in trying to do something useful what i can see is one of the messages that i've learned in recent years is how market forces the market that we live in make it more difficult than it should be to tackle the important needs of humankind. What I've seen is that challenges are more likely to be addressed if they lead, for example, to a blockbuster drug affecting a few people, but each of them paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for a course of treatment, than if they, um, the research affects the well-being of many, but bringing only a small return. My experience taking me to this conclusion has been with virus disease in plants and also in animals, peas and people. I think there are solutions to both of these challenges that haven't been investigated as thorough as they could be. These um, research could have mitigated challenges that we have in agriculture relevant to sustainable agriculture feeding the world, and I think also COVID as well. So I hope the Academy will address this problem of ensuring that research is effectively targeted at the important as well as the profitable challenges. And I look forward to working with the Academy on that and other challenges. So thank you for the great honor of being a member of the Academy. Thank you. And thank you for your proposal and for your signals that you will follow up with uh, work with us in the academy. Thank you very much.